Well, hello there. It's Stephanie, and I'd like to do a bit of a different format for this one. A collection of lessons and takeaways that I've gotten from doing these videos over the last couple of years. These are just personal takeaways. Um, and also there are no particular order. So let's go. Lesson one is don't sell yourself short. Louis Wayne, the cat guy, maybe you saw that movie with um, Cumberbatch. It was really good. You should if you haven't. His art was often used by the magazines that he freelanced for. He was an illustrator for several magazines at the time, but he would often sell his works outright and very cheaply. So he was never able to collect the royalties that he deserved. So those magazines went on to reprint his works over and over again. The crowds loved him. He deserved to continue to earn for his work, but he didn't. And this is a guy that had five sisters and a mother to financially care for back home. I don't know if in part maybe it was insecurity that he didn't charge the higher prices that he deserved at the time, but you know, like he felt like he didn't deserve it or something, but there was that. So for one, he was kind of on the cheaper side. No one ever told him, he never bothered to look into it. He did seem like he kind of had this childish naivete about him, but he never looked into copywriting any of his work and therefore didn't earn royalties. So he really sold himself short. So the lesson there is to know your worth for one. You know, maybe you're starting out and you're still have a lot of skills to learn. And so, yeah, don't let ego get in the way. Like maybe you don't deserve the higher pay or the higher fee for your services yet because you're not quite there yet, but do recognize on the playing field where you're at and recognize your work, recognize your worth. Also learn to negotiate. I don't know if he ever even bothered to ask for a higher number or ask for different terms. Maybe he just thought, you know, money in, artwork out, and that's the only way to do things. But in the world of business, there's always many ways to go about a deal. So learn to negotiate. And this also teaches me to keep up on the boring and tedious parts of, of the job, especially if you're into the creative fields. So for example, if you're a painter, yeah, it sucks to do bookkeeping and taxes, but you need to. It also really sucks to deal with contracts and invoicing and all of that, but you should, you have to, unless you have the monetary luxury of outsourcing those tasks. Self-educate, self-advocate learn to negotiate. We live, in the, we live in a digital world where we can learn just about anything if we really wanted to. Years ago, I looked into uh, a lawyer that was specific to working with creatives and freelancers to help me with my contract for photography. <laughs> and okay, she was very expensive, but I still got a quick little consult with her and at least got into the right direction. And then myself made the decision to self-educate so that I could make myself a better contract for commercial photography. But the resources are out there. So definitely self-educate, negotiate, know your worth. Don't sell yourself short. Lesson two is to stay grounded. Jean-Michel Basquiat lived fast and died young. It's like the more success and fame and wealth he got, the higher he wanted to get, the more he wanted to party, the more substances and more amounts of substances he wanted to do. It's like the highs kept chasing the other highs. That constant seeking of getting higher and higher ultimately caught up with him and he died at 27. And the way he died, which was by overdose of heroin, he had been hanging out with friends and then he went back to his apartment and I bet you, I don't know, I wasn't there, but I bet you he didn't, he wasn't trying to kill himself. He was probably just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to do some heroin and then did some heroin. And because he was so used to doing a certain amount, he had been clean for a little bit and then went back to that dose and it was way too much for his body and he OD'd. So more than likely it was an accident. So to him, you know, it was just this whatever thing because at that point, that's how ungrounded, unfortunately, he was getting high every day. So that's a reminder to... Stay grounded. Or at least, if you're going to fly high for a bit, get back to it and find something that grounds you, at least momentarily. Like, there needs to be a balance. Lesson three. 
Relationships require open communication. Salvador Dali and Gala had some very specific sexual needs, and it's great that they found each other because they complemented each other well in that respect. Dali was a voyeur and really into cangelism, which is like when you show off your partner or pictures of your partner and get off on other people being into your partner. So he was really into that kind of sharing. And he was actually very adverse to actual P and V sex, so he didn't want to actually do the thing, but he really liked watching. And Gala liked lots of sex all the time and didn't mind being watched. So those two were pretty much perfect for each other. I mean, they definitely had their issues and a lot of drama, and I think Gala was in some ways abusive towards him, and maybe he was not okay to her in other ways. I don't know. But from what we do know, they seem to fit each other well. So the takeaway there is to advocate for your needs. He was like, I like this thing, I don't like that thing, and she was like, oh great, I like this thing and not that thing, or maybe okay with this other thing. And they found each other's niche, I guess, in ways that work. And obviously, open communication doesn't mean open relationship. But the point is, they were honest with themselves about what they liked and didn't like. And they were very openly communicating that with one another. That is very important. Because if not, you're just living a life with somebody that you're not wanting to actually live. You're not being true to yourself. And that sounds like a miserable life, and life is too short, and don't, don't do that to yourselves, and don't do that to your partner either, because I bet you your partner doesn't want to be with you, knowing that you actually don't like all these things that you think you do, or say you do. So, always so important to be honest with yourself and them. Lesson three is balancing the duality of solitude. I personally struggle with this one a lot, because I am very introverted, and I like spending a lot of time by myself. But then sometimes a lot of time does go by and then it's days and then it just hits me all at once. And I'm like, oh, I'm lonely. <laughs> Something like, uh, I haven't seen another human in like three days and I feel lonely. <laughs> and it always surprises me because I'm always so okay hanging out by myself. But it, you know, it does happen. I think we all need some form of community. And we are social animals after all, so of course. Edward Hopper's Office in a Small City reminds me of this because it's a bit vague what the figure in the office is really feeling. So like, it almost looks like he's also going, ah, yes, finally alone time. But it also could be like he's looking out the window like, not a single human's out there. And the two are a very thin line because solitude can be a source of comfort and discomfort. Solitude as a form of peaceful introspection, and also solitude as a form of loneliness. So that painting, it's a little vague whether he's happy or not happy about being all alone in that cube. And sometimes I feel that. <laughs> like, am I happy or not happy to be all alone in my cube? Mostly I am. But if I don't take care of that balance and socialize enough outside of my little cube here, then yeah, it catches up with me. Lesson five is to seek things bigger than oneself. And this one comes from Bernini's sculpture, Ecstasy of St. Teresa. I think it's good to seek something bigger than oneself, such as spirituality. And while I personally am not religious, I don't want to assign any kind of religious dogma to that idea, um, but maybe that does mean that for you. So I do think it's valuable in life to connect with something bigger than just ourselves, our minds, our egos. That thing could be something like spirituality. Maybe it's um, the plant-based mind-altering drugs. Maybe it's volunteer work. I know that the last time I did volunteer work because I needed to, I ended up staying for like three extra months after just because I found so much purpose behind it. It was volunteering at a cat shelter. I love those kitties. And maybe that spirituality, you call it God, you call it the universe, whatever. Um, I think it's important for humans, for me, whoever, to seek something that's bigger than just ourselves from time to time. Part of the staying grounded balance, right? Stay grounded, maybe expand for a time. Lesson six is a place of one's own. 
Gabrielle Chanel's apartment was a total manifestation of her, the person. All of her collected objects told a story and they were so special to her. She had a ton of lions because she was a Leo and she had wheat, little symbols and sculptures of golden wheat because it was a symbol of prosperity and to her growing up super poor as a poor orphan and then becoming this very wealthy self-made woman, mostly self-made woman, the wheat symbolized that prosperity and coming up for her. And I'm so glad that the company has kept that apartment exactly as she kept it. I think that's super cool. Also the location of her apartment, it was over her workshop, which she just poured so much of her life into. And this place of one's own, it could be a home, it could be your vehicle, maybe a motorcycle, could be just a special tree that you like to sit in where the world just kind of slips away. It doesn't literally have to be a luxurious Parisian apartment, but I think it's really important to have some kind of place carved out that does feel like our own in some way. Lesson seven, humans just want to be understood. Mark Rothko felt like such an outcast and like the mission to his art was misunderstood by the audience or the art dealers or whoever. And while I don't necessarily agree with his feelings on that, and like who am I to agree or not agree with his feelings on how he felt about his own art, <laughs> but still he felt like his mission and his whole point that he was trying to make was misunderstood or taken for granted or just, it was not received. And that whole thing led to depression and together with a substance abuse problem eventually led to his end. And I think that right there, being misunderstood or misunderstanding, is what is at the core of so much human conflict and suffering. I mean, talking on the scale of wars down to, I don't know, a fight with your roommate or something. I think at the end of the day, people just want to be understood. Even if there's no clear resolution from the matter, they just want to be understood. So maybe next time you're at the checkout line and someone is being an ass or something near you, maybe it's an opportunity to stop and think about what the hell it is that they want. You know, like maybe they're throwing this adult tantrum, but behind that is some form of wanting to reach out and be understood. Like, wah, I'm important, my time, uh, hurry up. You know, it could be something petty, but I bet you misunderstandings or being misunderstood is, is what's behind that. So instead of getting defensive, I don't know, try, try that. Lesson eight is ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese concept. The iki meaning live and the gai meaning purpose or reason. So like reason to live, like what is your purpose here? So ikigai is what is found at the intersection of four things what you like to do, what you're good at doing, what the world needs, and what others will pay you to do. If you have found those four things in your life, then that is very fortunate. Good for you. I think Horace Gifford was very good at his job. He loved being on Fire Island, and he found a market that was more than happy to pay him to create their summer getaway homes. And he loved being in that summer getaway life. He also used his connections to further his career, but he built a life for himself that seems to be exactly what he wanted. He wanted to be on that island for as long as he could. He wanted to be surrounded by beautiful things and structures and, and work on those things. And he wanted to be freely gay. And this island allowed him to do that with all these other gay men that went there to just let loose. So all these things came together for him, I think, to give him a very fortunate career. Basically, he recognized his strengths, he worked hard, he made connections, and he was keen on what other people were wanting. So I think he carved out himself the perfect niche that embodies the ikigai. And that's all I've got for you today. But I do want to know if you found different lessons within these videos. These are all based on past videos I've done, most of them. I think that's part of how we grow as people is to see things in the perspective of others from time to time, whether we agree with them or not. So that's why I ask. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to support this channel, I have linked Patreon and other forms of one-time donations in the description below. So a big thank you to these patrons. I appreciate you and your contributions help me make time for more videos. Thank you, have an awesome rest of your day, and I hope you get to look at some art.